Alrighty, what's up everybody? My peeps, once again, what's going on my peeps? Peter fucking Joseph here for one final video on this late Tuesday night, January the 2nd, 2024. Or if you're not watching tomorrow, it is January the 3rd, 2024. As we, as we, uh, now in the middle, middle of the first week of 2024. So, still got a long way to go, ladies and gentlemen. But, it is what it is. Thank you for watching on video number three on your Triple Threat Tuesday. Right here. On the Peter fucking Joseph YouTube Wrestling Channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thanks for watching once again. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Right now. And that's it. I'm not going to do a whole big spiel this time. This is. So I'm freaking tired as fuck! Because I took a nap after uh, NXT went off the air. Took a little nap, got up, had a little little, uh, little bite to eat, and then watched a, little, watched a movie with the missus. And then, you know, she's sleeping. But. You know, I was like, I'm gonna get, I want to get this video done so I have all day Wednesday to do what I gotta do, and that's pretty much it. So, so no, no big intro this time. So, but like the video, subscribe, leave a comment if you wish, and don't forget to hit that bell because if you don't, you're pretty much SOL, and you know what that means. Ha! And that's it. All right. Check out my light, er, my uh, last two videos that I did earlier earlier this evening. Uh, my Wrestle Kingdom 18 predictions on TSL number 19. Link will be down below in the Gobbly Gook. Also, my first rant of 2024 about that schmuck Nick Houseman. A little bit of Sean Russ Sap and Meltzer thrown in. So. Check it out. That video is on my right channel, the legendary PG Rants channel. All the links down below. Uh, so, not that hard to find. So, it is what it is. You can't figure that out, then you got problems. <clears throat> that too. So we got that. So check it out right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this late Tuesday night, and you know what that means. It is time for your late, late night NXT New Year's Evil. And it's very evil and scary. Review. For January the 2nd, 2024. As always, emanating from the Capitol Wrestling Center in Orlando, Florida. Alright, the first event of the year. We're back live. From the, from the CWC in Orlando, Florida. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, as always, our commentary team of the man that's still creepy and wears a creepy jacket and still eats his candy on the commentary table. That's Vic Joseph and his, comment, and his color commentary partner, the man who smokes more fucking weed than you do. And that's true. That's Booker T. Sugar. All right. So, another year of New Year's Evil. And it was a pretty decent show for what it's worth. Uh, the main event was Ilya Kragunov, the Russian dragon himself, defending the belt against, against Booker T's homeboy. That's Trick Williams. He was about to whoop that trick. Oh, what? You yep. know, I like it. Oh, yeah, man. All right, stop, Booker T, stop. We got that. We got the finals of the NXT Breakout Tournament with the big man, Monty Brown 2.0, Oba Femi, taking on Riley, D Riley, don't call me Ozzy Osbourne. You know, dear hell's boy toy. We got that. We had Fallon, don't call me, D -D Don Henley, taking on Daddy's girl, Tiffany Stratton. Daddy! But not now. Not now. I know you're mad. But calm down for a second. Talk to you in a minute. Sunshine. Hold on. Yeah. 
We had that, uh, and a whole lot more on NXT New Year's Evil. We got all that. But there was, um, some not-so-good things happening on this show, and I'll get to that in a second. But also, during the show, we found out from the Heartbreak Kid, Sean Michaels, that a former NXT champion may be making an appearance. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. And since Andrade basically said his goodbyes to Tony Khan and AEW, and Tony Khan's like, you know, he's okay with it, you know. He thanked, he thanked Andrade for his time in AEW. So Andrade's making his comeback to, to WWE. And I was thinking, oh, tonight's the night, right? Wrong! I thought he was going to be in that six-man tag team match with the LWO, you know, uh, Legato of Joaquin Wild and Raul Mendoza. I thought he was going to, I mean, it fits. He's Latino. So I was like, yeah, Andrade's going to team up with them, right? Wrong! So, Andra I thought it was going to be Andrade. He is a former NXT champion. Was it Andrade? Which sucked. And then, so, everyone was like, oh, it has to be Andrade. But then it wasn't Andrade. And then, everybody on Twitter and YouTube were like, oh, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? We are like, throwing out names. Seth Rollins. Sami Zayn. Bo Dallas. You know, Fiend Balor. Shinsuke Nakamura. Kevin Owens, Killer Cross, you know, all the champions, even Pac, you know, you know, Pac, not X-Pac, Pac, or Aaron Neville, whatever his, Aaron Neville, whatever his name was in that fucking thread, but, you know, we just threw out names, and, you know, but, uh, the person that came out, I wasn't, I wasn't mad about him, like, why, <laughs> It's my good buddy, you know who he is. Not Adam Cole, baby. But, anyway. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. Alright, so we're going to do it in a little abbreviated uh, review. Tomorrow we're going to do a little bit longer for, for Dynamite! And, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, also, Hunter has a major announcement to make Thursday. Uh, don't know what it is. People are speculating... Uh, because TNA actually came out today, and actually they're not going to do pay-per-views no more. They're actually doing premium live events because of the Endeavor deal. Because no, they're, they're going on with Endeavor now. So I'm like, hmm. And then now people on Facebook and Twitter are saying that the major announcement is the WrestleMania for WrestleMania 41 location, which could be anywhere. I think it's going to be Minnesota. But people are like, oh, it should be in Vegas. Yeah, Vegas would be nice, too. At Allegiant Stadium. But then they're like, eh, that's next year. So you don't have to worry about the Super Bowl. But they, they can get, be in Vegas. People think it might be in Detroit. I mean, I think Nashville, I think, gets WrestleMania 42, I think. I think 42 or 43. So, well, it can't be in Nashville. So, okay, that throws that out. So, it's either going to be in Minnesota or Vegas or maybe somewhere else. So, I think that's going to be the major announcement, or it could be something else. So, we'll find out Thursday afternoon, and uh, hopefully I can do a video about that uh, before I do my Thursday uh, stuff I got to do. But, we'll see what happens with that, but I think it's going to be the WrestleMania location, because I don't think it's going to be like a TV deal or, or, or anything. I don't think it's going to be anything with TNA related. With the Endeavor thing. I doubt that. But pretty much I think. It's going to be the WrestleMania 41 location. And, and it's probably going to come down to Minnesota. Or Vegas. Or it could be overseas. UK? Hmm. I mean. I mean. WWE is going global this year. They'll be in Australia in a couple weeks. About a month from now I should say. Uh, they'll be in. Um, in. Paris and be in France in May for payback. Berlin for Bash of Berlin in August. Saudi Arabia show is coming up as well. And then you think about next year, uh, 2025, 
where's the Royal Rumble gonna be? Don't know. You know, Elimination Chamber. Then you think about next year's WrestleMania, WrestleMania 40, uh, 41. Not for, uh, yeah, 41. Could it be in the States? Could it be in the UK? The UK finally get, get it? I mean, they were clamoring for it. This Hunter's like, oh, you know what? Let's do it at Wembley. Really piss off AEW. I was like, oh, yeah, we, you guys can get 81,000. Oh, we'll do, we'll double that. Not even double it. I think they can get, like, a, a, at least 100,000. They'll sell that place out. 90 to 100,000 for, like, SummerSlam Wolf. 92 over again. Or 94, whatever it was. Even though AEW broke that record. I think Hunter's like, oh, you broke the record? Well, we'll we break the record. But it depends on what a, uh, what uh, all in three this year does. If they, if they can get like eighty five thousand, you know Hunter's gonna be like, all right, all right, we'll get ninety two thousand like we did at SummerSlam. <coughs> we'll see. It's like, all right, you want to want me, Tony Khan? We'll keep playing chess. We'll see what happens with, with that. But, yeah. So, I mean, UK could get the, get WrestleMania next year. That would be fun, a fun start time. Because you know how uh, WrestleMania is like five hours. So it's like six o'clock. It goes all the way up, like six, seven o'clock. It goes all the way up till 12, 12 o'clock. So WrestleMania, if it happens next year in, in England, with a start time of six o'clock... London time. We'll get WrestleMania here at 1 p.m. Going all the way to 6 o'clock. They go from 6 to midnight in London. Crazy. But they could do it. I think they might. But we'll see. So, hold on to your your uh, seats there, uh, people in the UK. Uh, you could be getting WrestleMania 41. But, really, I, I don't... I mean, I wouldn't mind WrestleMania in overseas. I'll be okay with it, but really, I like that. I like it to have. I really think it, it should be in Ve- and really it should be in Vegas because it's hot around that time. Well, not that hot, but you know, Vegas would be freaking out. Everybody be going to Vegas, which you know how what they say in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's gonna have a field day with that. Take me with you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, anyway. I kid. But I think I so, so I'll probably be down to Vegas or Minnesota. But then again, it could go to UK. But like I said, we'll see. Anyway, we move on. So that's the big announcement. Uh, Rampage did 326,000 views. Yeah. You know, it's, it was New Year's weekend. Nobody was going to watch it anyway. Plus, it was the go-home show before World's End. That uh, we don't have the raw numbers yet. I haven't seen it yet, but probably come out tomorrow, and then NXT's ratings will come out tomorrow too. So we got all that. So we got a lot of shit this week. I mean, Dynamite tomorrow, Wrestle Kingdom, like hours after that, two thirty in the morning here in the states on thir- early Thursday morning. Then New Year's Dash, like Friday morning, and then you got SmackDown live with the Tribal Chief. Do hope your ones. Acknowledge him every time, every day. So, Roman will be back. Logan Paul will be on the show. We got Rampage after that. Collision on Saturday. Good stuff. And then you finally we get a day off on Sunday. But right back at it on Monday. So, a lot of shit to get through this week. We'll get through it. So, that's why I did my Wrestle Kingdom predictions early. So, I didn't want to do it tomorrow and just... Or, or not even not even do tomorrow. I wanted to get it done quick, so that's what I did. So check that out. Links down below. That's it. All right, all right. So let's get into NXT New Year's Eve. All right. So we had the commentary scene, Vic Joseph and Booker T. Like I said, so we start off the show with an opening video package, looking at the major matches on the card: Ilya versus Trick. Uh. Lyra Valkyria versus Blair Davenport for the Women's Championship. Fallon Henley versus uh, Tiffy Tiff. 
you know, and that's that. So we got all that. So it's a new year, new beginnings. As uh, we are on the road to Vengeance Day, February the 4th. So I'm coming up pretty damn soon. So we got that. Let me move on. Alright, so we start the show off with our first match of the night. We're going right right to the title matches. Well, the title match. There was only, there was only two, ma two title matches. So the first of the two title matches. So we start off with the women and the women's championship. We have Blair Davenport taking on the Lassie from Ireland. My favorite person in the whole wide world. Lila, well, next to Tiffy, of course. Lila Valkyrie and the Lassie from Ireland. All right. So, Lyra's defending the belt against Blair Davenport, who won the Women's Iron Survivor Challenge match at Deadline. So, we got that. All right. This was a match. Thought it could have been a little bit better, but you know, it is what it is. So they fight off, they fight over a basic lockup to start. Not that we're really getting anywhere. And then Lyra grabs a cravat. A little bit, little bit of success on that. Um, and then she knocks Blair down. And then, uh, and then Blair comes back, goes to the top rope, hits a wicked, I mean wicked, Double stomp, like like Lyra's face from like pfft, right in, like directly into the mat. I was like, ooh, I could have been broken next city. Ouch! And on top of that, a neck breaker for a near fall. But then Lyra comes back with a jaw breaker, goes to the high cross body and missed. But Lyra comes right back, goes a fisherman suplex for a near fall, goes on top again, and then gets pulled down and. Probably the Mac, the move of the night, a Super Falcon Arrow. Nice. Take notes there, Seth Rollins. Would have been better if she hit the, she hit that, got back up and hit like a Gilmore Cutter. Don't take notes, guys. Don't take notes. You think you think you can do that? Eh. Be innovative, like like your like your tribal god. And your champion of champions, Peter Joseph. Be innovative. Think of things before you do it, though. But, anyway. Fal I would have done a Falcon Arrow. Got back up. Boom! Gilmore Cutter. One, it's over. It, it would have been over. And then she would have kicked out. I'm like... I would have just looked. I'm like, I would have been shocked. I'm like... Then I'm like, get really mad. Like, really? I did all that work? Come on, now. <laughs> Kick him right in the fucking gut. Like, bitch! Then I'm going to hit another Gilmore Cutter for good measure. I'm like, oh, you're getting up for this one. Okay, I'll hit it five straight times until you s sit the fuck down. But I digress. But anyway, that was a nasty crash. That was sick. Cr cr crowd was like, wah! Then they go to the outside. And, you know, they tease the count out. And Blair, like, kind of just dumps... Dumps her right next to Booker T by the announce table. And then... And then Blair looked like she was about to do the, uh... The, uh... Kogayame, you know, the... the grabs the arms and then V-trigger. Right into the face. Lyra moved, and Blair's knee crashed right into the announce table. And had a big, humongous hole in it. Ow! Ooh, that's gonna hurt. They go back in... Blair misses another double stomp. I don't know how your knee didn't break on that. But anyway. She goes with a double stomp and missed. And that set up a Samoan driver by, by Lyra Valkyria. One, two, three. She retains the NXT Women's Championship in just under eight and a half minutes. So, that was expected. I was hoping for Corey J to come out after this. No. But... Anyway, so, match was alright. Gave it two and a half out of five stars. After the match, Lola Faista, la, the hottie from Puerto Rico. Lola Faista comes out, tries to cash in her NXT breakout contract, but then the creepy, the creepy woman, Tatum Paxley, or as I call her, fake-ass fuck Rosemary, Daphne 2.0. Sorry, girl, I'm sorry. 
Anyway. Tatum Paxley, you had a freaking Freddy Krueger, like, you know, sweater on. You're trying to be, like, freaking Alexa Bliss. Stop. Remember when Alexa came out when she was in NXT? When she was with, Mur- uh, with Buddy Murphy and, um... Um, the other guy, I can't think of the other guy. She, and then she came out with the Freddy glove, she's wearing the, the, the torn up Freddy Krueger sweater. I was like having like flashbacks on freaking Alexa Bliss. I'm like, God damn. Anyway, so she comes out for the save, and then Alexa Lopez, another hottie potangana, or Boricua, she comes out. Goes after Tatum, and then both of them start, you know, all four women are beating the crap out of each other. And then that gets broken up, and then Tatum, like, starts, like, going at, going at, like, touching, she's touching Lyra. I was like, ah! She's fucking creeped out. I don't blame her. <laughs> so it looks like, I'm like, oh, great, now we're going to get a creepy taxi match. So I was like, alright, yeah, we're gonna next week we're gonna get Lola Vice and Alexa Lopez taking on Myra Valkyria and Creepy Tatum Paxley. That's great television. So we'll see what happens with that. And we move on with that. Alright, then we go to the medics off medics room. Or outside the medics off, I don't know what it is. Medics room office. Whatever you want to call it. We have Kelly Kincaid, Quinn McKay, whatever you want to call it, outside the room, and she gives us an update on Ilya Dragunov, and it's not so good, Al. Uh, she says, Ilya is too banged up uh, to compete, It's not, and the medics have, are not clearing him to compete, so the NXT title match is off. I'm like, yeah, I heard this before. I was pissed, but I'm like, wait a minute. I've, I've seen this story before. Ilya's, Ilya's probably in the, in, the, in the room cursing, cursing up a storm. Like, I can fight! Let me fight! And then, at the end of the show, he comes out. Or, like, near the end of the show, he's like, I'm gonna fight. And, the, and then the, the stupid medic's like, okay. Well, not this time. So. So. It, I'm thinking it's gonna go. It, they're gonna do the match at Vengeance Day when it was just one hundred percent. I'm still thinking it's gonna be a triple threat match with a guy named Mello in it, but we'll see. All right, so that sucks. So the NXT title match is off. So I'm like, well, what the fuck's the main event gonna be? What's Trick gonna do? Well, we'll find out in a little bit. So that's that's that. So I gave that two and a half out of five stars. All right, then we go to the six man tag team match. With uh, with the LWO of Joaquin Wild and Raul Mendoza Legado. Well, who's their partner gonna be? Because it's not Dragon Lee because he had visa issues. So outcomes. I was hoping on Andrade, but it was not. Like I said, it's Carlito. So Carlito comes out because Carlito is cool, and he spits in the face of people who don't want to be cool. So if you're not cool. Godito will spit on you. So, anyway. So, they take on Catchpoint 3.0 of Drew Gulak, Damon Kemp, and the Waterboy, Miles, Miles Bourne, because uh, Mr. Rico's son, Charlie Dempsey, is now is in Japan, fighting for, the, fighting for some title on AJPW, or Japan Pro Wrestling, for you dumb, dumb people, I don't know. That's nice. Alright, so this match... Eh... It was, a, it was good. It was a crazy spot in this match. Uh, they all got out the, the uh, Tech Point 3.0, gets sent to the outside, and then Joaquin Wall goes over the top, and then looks like he was about to do a springboard, like like a side moonsault or some type of move, and he gets on the ropes, and Carlito and Raul Mendoza are holding the ropes, and they, and they go, bing, and... And freaking Raulman, not Raul, sorry. Joaquin Wild goes way up in the air. He like goes like 30 feet in the air. I was like, God damn, he got launched like a freaking cannon. Cannonball? No, not cannonball. He got launched it up into the air. I mean, launched. And you thought Final Fantasy 13 launch? 
Mm-mm. Not even, well, maybe close to that. But, I mean, he was launched like a missile onto all three of them. And I was like, holy shit! That might be the move of the year. It was a spot of the year. I mean, we got one way to go, but still. That was crazy. And they go back in, they go back and forth. Uh, Joaquin Wall goes up top, hits uh, one hell of a corkscrew dive. And then Carlito comes in, hits the backstabber on Damon Kemp. And then, and then Raul Mendoza hits the Phoenix Splash. One, two, three, in eight and a half minutes. The LWO get the win. And that's always nice. Latino! So we get all that. Ah, excuse me. Something gets stuffy. <clears throat> that's not. It needs to cure. Yeah, I got Burger King. Earlier in the night, we got. Me and the Mrs. got Burger King. Ahem. <clears throat> because we were craving it, so. In any case, well, we got something light. We didn't get too much. We just shared some chicken fries, and that's it. Moving on. Alright, so that was crazy. So I gave the match three out of five stars. Then we go to the locker room. We have. Trick Williams, whoop that trick, what? Okay. And his good buddy, well, sort of good buddy, Carmelo Hayes, uh, they're in the back. Trick is pissed at the title match is being canceled. And then, oh, he did it. Grayson Waller makes an appearance. The original Iron Survivor, the first one from last year's uh, Iron Survivor challenge match, as Tiffany won the first one as well for the women at Deadline. Last year. So he comes in and he talks his shit. He's like, oh, you know. I'm like, don't, you know, he's talking shit. He's like, oh, you know, you, you're not going to win anyway, this and that. So Carmelo's like, oh, I got an idea. How about you guys fight and the winner gets the number one contender spot? And Drew's like, what? Wait a minute, what? So Grace's like, oh, okay. I'll see you out there. And Drew's like, you son of a bitch! I'm like, uh oh. I was like, is Melo gonna cost Trick his title shot? Uh, and then Grayson gets it, and we get Grayson versus Dragon Off, which will suck. Stay tuned. We got more. All right, so I get that two and a half out of five stars. And that's it. All right, they're gonna video about Riley. Don't call me Ozzy Osbourne. Different spelling, by the way. Uh, he's writing an essay in class. Well, he, no, there's nobody there. But he's in the classroom writing an essay about what it would mean to become the next European star. Okay. I don't even know he's from Europe. I know he's from America, but... Okay. So I got that. So I gave that two and a half out of five stars. Alright. Match number three on your scorecard. We go back to the women. There was showcase to women a lot tonight. There was a lot of booty in that, in that in the, on tonight. Booty! I got that. So we have our Santino Morello's hot as fuck daughter, Ariana Grace, taking on taking on AJ Lee 2.0, Roxy, Roxanne Perez. Five minute match. Well, he wasn't that great. Uh, I think we all knew the result. I mean, Ariana Grace got a little bit of, you know, moves in. Not much. Roxy beat the fuck out of her. She wins with Pop Rocks in five minutes. She has to win. Match gave 2.25 out of five stars. And then after the match, Ariana gets up, starts yelling at Roxy again, and then Roxy just snaps. I mean, she turned into Rosemary, basically, or Daphne. Roxy goes completely berserk, beats the crap out of her again, locks in the crippler crossface. Oh, shouldn't have said that. She locks in the crossface and won't let go. And then, like, 6,000 referees come out. She finally breaks the hold. And then the, ref, the original referee's like, ah, no, I'm reversing the decision. The winner of the match is Ariana Grace. I'm like, oh, fuck. I figured Booker T was pissed. He's like, I, I, I don't like this. I don't like this player. I haven't seen this before. So, basically, 
A lot of people on Twitter were saying that Roxy turned into AJ Lee. I don't blame him because she looks like AJ. So she went cuckoo. She went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So we get all that. So I don't know what's going to happen with this situation. Probably something like Vengeance Day, I bet. Well, we'll see. All right, so instead of Roxy winning, Ariana Grace won. <laughs> That's that. Let me move on. All right, then we go outside of the Heartbreak Gate. Sean, Michael's office, and out comes the beautiful Ava Rain. Oh, who she's the daughter of? Oh yeah, that guy named Dwayne. Didn't mention it in either. I was kind of surprised. It's like, like Cal Kincaid is like, oh yeah, did you know, did you know your dad was on Raw? Cutting a boring as fuck promo. Fuck you, Dwayne. You're gonna get smashed. By the, by the tribal chief. Probably be at Elimination Chamber because there's a 60,000... 60,000 plus stadium in Perth, Australia. They really want to have The Rock there. Kind of fits, I guess. So I think... So Cody might be pissed now, but he might be actually happy that the match happens at Elimination Chamber and not WrestleMania. I'd rather have it at WrestleMania. Fuck you, Cody. Or, how about, how about Cody vs. The Rock <laughs> at, at, at the Elimination Chamber? Or inside the Elimination Chamber? Both men can, can, can be in it. I'd rather, I'd really not. I don't think Rock should be even in the Chamber if they ever do that. I'm like, why? But I think that match screams WrestleMania. Just me. And I think all the people. I think all the people, by the sound of my voice, you'll probably agree with me, right? Bigger event, WrestleMania, less people will be there. I mean, because I think that, I think Lincoln Financial Field holds, well, well, on the field, probably hold at least 70,000, so, I mean, pick your poison, you want to do it in Australia, or you want to do it in cold as fuck Philly? I mean, because basically somewhere there in Australia, and it's a stadium, so it's going to be, you know, hot as fuck. I mean, we'll have to see what happens. Probably after, uh, well, maybe this week, this this Friday, because Roman's on the show, so he might mention The Rock. And then we'll probably find out when this match actually happens. If it doesn't happen on February the 24th, then it's probably going to happen on April the 7th, night 2. But I think they're going to wait till after the Royal Rumble to make the official announcement of... Rock versus Roman, whether it be at WrestleMania or it's going to be at the Elimination Chamber. I'm probably, I would guess it's going to be at the Elimination Chamber, but I would have it at WrestleMania. But that's just me. So we get all that. Uh, so anyway, Aver Rain comes is comes out of the office and announces that next week we're going to have the start of the men's Dusty Rhodes Big Dream Baby, the Tag Team Classic Baby. That starts next week. Oh my great, another tournament. Why not? Okay. So I would think over the next uh I don't know when the, the tournament ends, but I wouldn't be surprised if it ends at Vengeance Day or maybe uh maybe St. Valentine's Day Massacre. I mean it's not on the, it's on a on the thirteenth, because Valentine's Day the day after. That'd be fu- that's gonna be a fun dynamite. Valentine's Day Massacre on on Dynamite. February the 14th, by the way. So, we got that. That should be fun. So, but if AEW... Uh, not AEW, sorry. NXT does something like that. I would probably have the Dusty Rhodes Finals... Uh, on that day. And then... I would start the women the week after that. February the 20th. Start the Women's Dusty Rhodes client, uh, Cup. Even though there's no NXT Women's Championship. But, just have the Women's Championship... Being defended at stand and deliver. That's what I would do. Had the women's Dusty Dusty Cup Finals or the the women's championship finals at stand and deliver. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, so, so the teams are going to be formulated next week. We got to have the we got the brackets. Probably, 
announced, well, not announced, they'll, we'll sh they'll show the, bra the, the tournament and the brackets and everything. You know, we'll get that. We move on. All right, so we got that. So I get that 2.25 out of 5 stars. All right, there we get a video on Tiffy Tiff, Tiffany Stratton, and Fallon Henley before their ultimate humiliation match. Look at that. Then we go to the back where we have Blair Davenport all fucked up from her match against Lila Valkyria. She runs into Thakita Leon's, you know, those hot as fuck thighs. She's, she's a brick house. He's my tomato. You know. So the King of Leons comes in and starts, you know, mocking her. You know, it's like, oh, you got B. Look at what happened. Uh, you know, this and that. And she's like, she wants revenge. And and Blair's like, like, like nah, you know, I don't want, want it. And then she kind of, like, talks some shit. And then the kid is, like, takes off her jacket. It's like, oh, we can do this right now. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it right now. So I fight his tees. And then... Couple of referees and two guys. I'm like, wait a minute, they look familiar. I want to know who those guys are. They look really awfully familiar. But anyway, they break everything up. So it looks like we got um next week we got Nikita Leons and Blair Davenport most likely next week. But we'll see what happens. All right, so I get a 2.25 out of five stars as well. Let me move on. All right, there we go to the ultimate humiliation match. Lasted nine minutes. We got Daddy's favorite girl. Come in here, sweetheart. I know you're upset, but come in here anyway. Give your daddy a hug and kiss. Mm. Daddy's girl. I'm Daddy. Tiffany Stratton. How you doing, girl? Daddy, I'm so fucking mad. Yeah. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Have your squishy. Uh, she takes on former girl. Fallon, don't call me, does it, Don Henley. And uh, Fallon wins, Tiffy Tip becomes her ranch hand, so she has to get dirty. Or, and if Tiffy wins, uh, Fallon will become her, basically, like, maid, servant. It is what it is. Uh, pretty eh match. Uh, went back and forth. Uh, Fallon hits a crucifix bomb for an airfall. Uh, but then Tiffy Tip tries to come back and goes for the prettiest moonsault ever and landed on her feet. Ah. Landed on her feet. They crash out to the floor. Tiffy Tip, Tiffy Tip grabs a chair, brings it in the ring, and the referee's like, no, no, no! Takes it away from her, and then Fallon hits the shiniest wizard. What a shining wizard. One, two, three. Fuck! Fallon Henley gets the win, and now Tiffy Tiff has to go down to the farm and milk some cows, clean up some cow shit, get dirty, get her hands dirty. Ah, oh, it's not good. I mean, I'm pissed. But then again, hmm, I'm actually kind of thinking about that. <laughs> Tiffy Tiff getting dirty, getting in the mud. I, I smell a mud. I smell them rolling around in the mud next week. I feel it. I feel it. Tiffy's pissed, but then she's like, hmm, this could be, this could work out for me. And then she goes on Twitter and puts up a picture of uh, The Simple Life with uh, Paris Hilton and, uh, who's the other chick? Uh, Nicole Richie. Hmm. It could work. Next thing you know, the tag team partners in the women's Dusty, Dusty Cup. They could win it. So it could work out. It could work out, baby girl. It could work out. What? What? Daddy, I don't want to get dirty. Well, wait a minute. Never mind. Right, okay. Just, just bring an extra pair of shorts, okay? And some clothes. Just don't get that dirty, okay? You know. It, just that, that cow winter smell, it takes a long time to get out, you know what I mean? Not that I know anything about that, but... I'm just saying. If you watch Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3, you know what I'm talking about. Manure! I hate manure! You cost me 3,000 bucks on my car, you son of a bitch! 
Now I'm going to take it out of you. And then he got knocked out. <laughs> God damn it, Biff. But I'm thinking this really could work out for the better for Chiffy Tiff. But man, seeing her in those Daisy Dukes. Ooh, makes, it just makes my dick hard thinking about that. God damn it. Oy, oy, oy. But we'll see what happens next week. And that's it. But as far as the match goes, once again, 2.25 out of 5 stars. And that's it. We move on. Alright, then we go to a weird segment with Baron Snorby Corbin. Yeah, he's still in NXT, ladies and gentlemen. When's he going to the main roster? Another guy who should be on the main roster, probably be after WrestleMania. Blood Breaker! They're talking, and Baron Corbin pitches the idea of them be of him and and Braun is like, hey, let's be a tag team in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Braun's like, me and you as a tag team? Nah, that wouldn't work. And Corbin points out that no one else wants to be your partner. So how about, you know, I'll be your partner. So break, And then it's like, we'll go, we'll, we'll be a team. You know, we're both assholes. Why not? Team asshole. Let's do it. Right, Paul Stanley, right? Let's do it. Exactly. Anyway, so Breaker's like, wait a minute. This could work. Why not? So, looks like we got Team Asshole in the Dusty Cup. I wouldn't put it past them getting to the finals and possibly winning it. Imagine, imagine them being the tag team champions, being like Tony D and Stax. They'll be a Sad way to go, right? Right there, cuz? Yeah, we'll talk in a minute. Hmm. But we'll see what happens with that. So I gave that segment two and a half out of five stars. Then we get a video. Uh, video. Bop, bop, video! No. Uh, so we get a video of the big man, Uba Femi, always known as Monty Brown 2.0. From the Serengeti. But he doesn't hit the pounce! Period. I wish he did. That would be funny. I mean, he has the beads and everything. Not the anal beads. That's Wheel of Yuta's territory. No, actually he does. That's not his territory. <laughs> Wheel of Yuta is the type of guy that got banned from Mardi Gras for showing his tetes. He didn't get beads that day. He got, a, he got some restraining orders. <laughs> That's how bad Wheel of Yuta is. We did you got went to New New Orleans and he came out with a restraint with a bunch of restraining orders. Cause he went to Mardi Gras. He thinks he's great. Hey, hey what my be? Hey, look at me! Fuck you, Wheel of Unity! You get out of here! You fucking mark! I mean, Jesus Christ, man! Freaking get banned from freaking Mardi Gras just for showing his showing his ugly, disgusting surfboard body. Yeah, nasty. I mean, I would, I, I, I'd love to go to Mardi Gras. I want to go to Mardi Gras. I'm not gonna show my titties. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know about, I don't know about you know who. Well, I mean, she got a nice rack, but just say, shh. Anyway. She can get her own beads, if you know what I mean. But, me? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> No comment! But I'd love to go to Mardi Gras. I'd love to go to New Orleans. New Orleans! Go down, go down, uh... Go down where are they, they, uh... Go down the street, basically. Go down the street where... The originals was was shot. You know, I go down there. Nobody, I mean, like a few people going around, and I like I, I recognize a few buildings that were in the originals. I'm like, hey, Klaus Michelson, get your ass out here! Get your, wait, wait, Elijah, get out of here! Where's Rebecca Michelson? Where the hell are Michelsons? Get them out here! Oh wait, did that? Damn it! Give me, give me more self. Where's freaking Hope Michelson when you need her? I don't know, maybe I can find. Well, 
I would say, oh, we maybe we can find a salvage uh, where uh, the uh, the vampire dies was shot too. It was I think it was in New Orleans as well. I think uh, I don't know where, where um I think uh Legacies was shot in upstate New York because it was the Sal the Salvatore Academy. So it might have been New Orleans. I think it was in New Orleans as well. I think everything was shot in New Orleans. That, that whole those that three spin offs basically. I think we're all shot in New Orleans. I don't know where True Blood was filmed. I don't know if that was in New Orleans or was maybe it was in Alabama. Or maybe Arkansas. I don't know. Probably the south. I know it was in the south, but I don't know where exactly. Sucky! I miss that show. I miss that show. I miss Eric Northman so much, man. I do. You want to talk about the best vampires in history? That is number fucking one. Fuck Dracula. Fuck Nosferatu. Eric fucking Northman, my friends. Best vampire of all time. He would fuck Blade up. I'm telling you the truth. Fuck you there, uh, Mr. Uh, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> I mean, you might have some, some moves. Eric Northman's way too quick for you, dude. Way too quick. But then, you know... I would say I would say Blade would have the advantage because of the, because he has the daylight ring. Oh wait, wait! Eric Dorfman has one too. Near the end of the sh near the end of the series, if you follow along, you thought he died in, at the end of season six. I mean season well oh, season f I think season five. You see him. You see him like he's on he's on like some Swiss Alps, like some freaking mountain. He's like, hmm, I feel fine. Wait, what's that smell? Oh, shit! Ah! I'm like, no, you did not kill him! Everybody was, everybody was crying, everybody was pissed, because they thought they killed off Eric. But then again, uh, that would have been, that would have been really bad if they come back, they came back next to the final season without Eric. I'm like, come on, dude. Well, you see Eric in see the final season, and I mean that was just great. I know he doesn't he doesn't get with Suki because Suki gets with some other fucking idiot. Not not Bill, but Bill die. Oh yeah, he does actually die. Come on for you. Oh, now I just gave it away. Oh no no, no not that you would seen anyway. No, was up. No, what else was in that show Scarlet. I almost said Scarlet Below. Scarlet Johansson. Woo! Season 3. Mmm. Oh, she was scrumptious. And even Elliot from Law and Order was in it. Played like a gay vampire. Ooh. That's a stretch. <laughs> but still, that, I love that show. That's probably one of my favorite vampire shows. Next to the originals, of course, and uh, Legacies. I don't even know what happened to all the cast of Legacies. I don't even know what they're doing. I'll find out later. I'll find out tomorrow. Like what uh, Hope Michelson's doing, and uh, you know, MJ, you know, and the, uh, you know, Lizzie and uh, her sister, you know, the twin sisters. I like to know what all of them are doing now. I think the same in a new, uh, a new series. I think, uh, What's her name? The Chinese, I think it was Chinese or Japanese chick. The witch, what's her name? Ang Angela, I think it was, I think it was Angela. The one who was going out with MJ at the time, and then she kind of, she kind of was with him, kind of was not. She was like, good, then bad, then got good to the end. I think she, she's on another series, uh, Kung, I think she's on Kung Fu. I think she is, I got, I mean, I haven't watched it in a while, but I think she was on the first season. I don't, know she, I don't even know that show's not on. I don't watch the CW much. I mean, I will be in October when NXT goes on. I'm like, oh, hey, CW11, I love you. I don't watch your shit anymore because you don't have any good shit. I mean, if there's a good CW11 show, let me know. Maybe I'll watch it. I mean, they had Gotham Knights, but eh, Gotham Knights was... Pfft. 
They had the Flash. I think that the Flash ended. All the good shows ended on that, that fucking program. Everything's like new. I'm like, or, or in like the third or fourth season of stuff. I'm like, eh. I'm not gonna catch up with that shit. But CW11 has some good shows, man. Good shows. Buffy, Angel, Charmed, uh, su uh, Supernatural. I mean, that was one of the best. Uh, what else do they have? Um, Smallville, Dawson's Creek. Yeah, I had to say Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Jack Oswald was on that show, so I can't say anything bad about it. Um, good stuff, man. Charmed, Legacies, uh, super, uh, like I said, Supernatural, um, The Originals, Vampire Diaries. Good fucking shows, man. I was like in, in, oh, that, that, this is television. And now, we got like, boring as fuck shows. I'm like, what is this? I don't even watch Channel 11 that much anymore. Unless there's a mech game on. But now I, I get, I, at least I get to watch wrestling now in October. I get to see what's coming up this fall on the CW11 besides wrestling, whatever day NXT would be on. Probably, I hope it's on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Oh, well, whatever. We got that. Anyway, moving on. Alright, so we got a video on the big band Obafemi. And then we go to the women's locker room. We got more booty! Yay, booty! Not, yeah, boy. Wait, booty. Alright, so we have uh, Corey Cade. Oh, she looked fine. Woo! God damn you, Braun Breaker, laying down that pipe. You bastard. So anyway, Corey Cade comes in. And we see the we see uh, Gigi there, Gigi, the lovely Gigi Dolan, uh, sitting in her locker. She's kind of miffed at that. And then Gigi uh, gets up. They start talking shit. Then they're about to fight, and then the rest of the girls are like, "Oh, I have to hold them back." So I think they're gonna do a match next week. I mean, we'll see. But I think it might. I got an itch. Sorry. I think it's gonna lead to. I think it's gonna have a match at Vengeance Day, maybe a hardcore match. But I mean, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so I get that two point two five out of five stars. All right, after that, we go to Sarah Schreiber, and yeah, she's still part of the company, guys. Uh, with a sit down interview with Rich Holland, and this is a very sad segment. He talks about. How this is his redemption story. He talks about his first run in NXT ended with with that horrific. I mean, that was horrific when he was um part of that group with um what was it called the Brawling Brutes? I forgot what it was called. It was him and um Biff Busick and um oh, I forgot the other guy's name. That big group they had. They they, uh, they were in uh, war games, war games, back in the day, and then Rich had double. Uh, he he broke both of his legs on a he, like I forgot who it was. He, he caught him, and then his legs just buckled, and he just like went down the heap. Oof! So double leg injury that he showed that like Ugh. the nasty. And he broke his ankle too. Like, oh, man, he got fucked up. It was just nasty looking at the pictures of that shit. Uh, it was right before his wife gave birth to the, to the twi uh, to twins. That's not fun. Uh, so he was in the hospital. So he comes back, joins the brawling brutes. Then he got hurt again. I think he, got a, he broke his nose. Or some type of no facial injury. Uh, then he had the twin sons, only to come back to NXT, come back to NXT again, and then he had that match two weeks ago where he injured Ilya Dragunov with that weird, sick-looking DDT. Uh, so he's kind of, you know, a little bit upset about it, 
But there was no malicious intent. He's not a monster who tries to hurt people. And he knows how fast things can be taken away. But he's still here to prove himself. And that's it. No controversy, nothing. Like, Ridge is like, oh, I meant to do that. So I'm like, wait a minute. This kind of sounds familiar like a Von Wagner story. Which I don't know if you know that that's actually real, that he actually has a plate in his head. But we do know his uh, his father is uh, one of the Beverly Brothers. That's actually true. So. We got that. So it's kind of sad. So I gave it three out of five stars. And we move on. Alright. Then we go to our next match. The finals of the breakout tournament. For the men. We got the big man Obafemi taking on Riley. Don't call me Ozzy Osbourne. Alright, so before the match, uh, we see Riley going to the ring, and then we, we see JC Jane, woo, JC Jane, and Thea Hale, the resident weed girl, doesn't smoke as much weed as, as Booker T, probably, probably smokes from the same stash. Anyway, so they come, they, they, they come in, and JC's like, go talk to him, go talk to him. So Thea goes up to, goes up to her Boy, so, so, uh, boyfriend or boy toy or crush, whatever it is, and gives Riley a pep talk. He says, I hope you win. He's like, Oh, thanks for the pep talk. High five. He was like, Gets all excited in her. And then Booker T's like, I, like, I think she needs a cigarette. <laughs> Booker T, sometimes you're weird, but that was funny. That was funny. I was, I, I, <laughs> and then somebody, I was like, Issa's chat, some, one, one of the people in the chat said that Thea Hale had a whiteout <laughs> in her pants. In her pants. That was like, that's savage, man, that's savage. Anyway, we get to the match. Match was okay, not great. Uh, under 10 minute match. Back and forth they went, uh, Riley almost won the match. Goes up top. Goes for the shooting star press. But Oba got his knees up. And then basically that was it. Oba said, that's it. I'm done. He grabs a toss powerbomb into a pop-up powerbomb. Ooh, that's a combo. One, two, three. Oba Femi is the new NXT Men's Breakout Tournament Champion. And he gets the contract, which you can cash in at any time. He wants. Oh, I would. I want. I want Ilya Dragunov and Obafemi at stand and deliver. I want that match. That'll be big. Well, I wouldn't say big beefy men slapping me, but it'll be a slobber knocker. Back down, slobber knocker. We got that. So match itself was okay. Gave it three out of five stars. Man, that's it. Alright, then we get like a lot of segments coming up. I mean, he just went segment after segment after segment after segment. Where's the CNA? Anyway, so we start off with with the Bawequa Gangsters and Reggie. Uh, they're ready to win the tag team belts next week from my cousin Tony D and Stax. Because the champs are no longer hungry. Yeah, they, didn't, they just they had a great meal at the Waffle House. Because, <laughs> you know, they're from, they're from the streets. So. Anyway. I thought they were going to be in the tour in the Dusty Rhodes tournament and then get the title shot. But I forgot. Oh, that's right. They beat Chase U last week. Or a week or two. Yeah, last week. I was like, oh, right. I forgot about that. Alright. Okay. So, next week, we got... Uh... got Lucius Price and, uh... What's the other guy's name? I can't think of the name. Uh, basically, so we got the Bariqua Gangsters and Reggie taking on, well, the Bariqua Gangsters taking on Tony D and Stax for the NXT Tag Team Belts. Title change? I don't think so. I think, I think, uh, Tony D and Stax will probably lose it either at Jenkins Day or probably Stunned and Dildo. Probably the Braun Breaker and Corbin, but we'll see. We got that. Alright, 
Then we go to the back where we have, I think it was Kelly Kincaid with the lovely, account, a hot and sexy accountant, Kelly James and her best friend, Izzy Dame. And they're all ready to be a perfect partnership. And we'll see why. That's it. They're like, goddamn, Kelly James. <laughs> booty! I mean, you can't get enough booty, man. Can't get enough booty on this show tonight. Holy shit. We move on. Alright, after that, uh, Trick and Mello continue to yell at each other. And Trick continues to yell at Carmelo for making the decision about, about Grayson Waller uh, getting a match with him for the number one contendership. So, Carmelo's like, don't worry, I believe in you. But Trick's like, you know, don't come out with me. I'm going to do this by myself. And Mel's like, wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Don't you want me out there? No. Doing it myself. Sit in the back. And don't come out. He is pissed. That's it. All right. Get that. Then after that, uh, we see Thea Hale and JC Jane walk in the back. They're all kind of pissed off that, um, you know, Thea's boyfriend, Riley Osborne, Lost to Oba Femi, but then the rest of Chase U comes in. Duke Hudson and Mr. Chase, they come in and said they're ready for the Dusty Cup. And then, you know, they're gonna win, get the tag team belts back, pay off the debt to Tony D. So JC's like, hold on a second. It's not gonna be you, you two f- teaming up. It's gonna be you, Mr. Chase. You need to refocus and you need to refocus and get this debt taken care of. So you're going to team up with Riley Osborne. Actually, it's going to be uh, Osborne and Duke Hudson. I thought it was Os- uh, Mr. Chase and Riley Osborne. So it's going to be Riley Osborne and Duke Hudson in the tournament. And then DL's like, yay! And then Mr. Chase's like, hmm, okay. They're not going to win. I doubt they win. They win the tournament. Maybe get to the finals, but I doubt it. But we'll see. We get that. Then after that, uh, we see Lightning of Ankelia, you know, sitting on a equipment box, you know, still kind of licking her wounds from the match with Blair Davenport. And then creepy Tatum Paxley comes in. He's all happy that Lyra is still a champ. And then she starts touching her, and I was like, STOP TOUCHING ME! They're gonna be a tag team. Oh god, they're doing the Dusty Cup. That'd be weird. Uh. I mean, no, I mean, no offense, but Tatum Paxley, I mean, you are doing a good Daphne, but stop. I know she got inspiration from her, you know, you great sexy woman, you. I love you. But, I digress. Uh... But, I mean, she's playing it to a T. And I like it. Creeps me out, but not as creepy as uh, Rosemary or Daphne does. Daphne's the original screen queen. She pulls that off so good. But Tatum's doing a good job. So give her some credit, please. We got that. Alright, then after that, more segments. We got A-Kid, Axiom, and Ben Frazier talking in the locker room. We see Brooks Jensen just, like, sitting there doing nothing. Playing with himself. I don't know. Uh, so they're talking. They're talking. They're going to be in the Dusty Cup together. And then we see Eager Sanofi and Malik Blade pop in. I guess they're going to be in the tournament too. And then Frazier's like going off and going off on everything. And he's like. And then he's like. Somebody's behind me again, right? So he was insulting all like a whole bunch of other teams. And then. The job squad comes in, I'm like, well, you were saying? And then they basically say, say some shit, they leave, and then Ben Frazier's like, yeah, I need to stop doing that. And it's like, well, we're still best friends, right? Yeah. We're going to team up with the Dusty Cup? Yeah. Okay. Good. Got that. This tournament looks pretty damn good with some of these teams. But I think the winner is probably going to be Corbin and uh, Braun Breaker. I mean, if they don't win, that's sad. Got that. All right, then we finally end this marathon of segments with, oh, here he comes. 
Hey, Gus, wake up! Get in here! I know it's late, but get in here! Hey, Gus! Hey, bye, bye, son! My legit cousin! I'm not kidding, he's my legit cousin! Tony D'Angelo, who gets you a, a nice cannoli for two dollars! I don't eat cannolis, but... You got those rainbow cookies there, cuz? You still got them, right? They're in the freezer, right? Okay, I'll go have some after. Yeah, you got me some rainbow cookies for my birthday. They're so good. Tastes just like Juicy Pussy. <sighs> Yummy! Anyway, so Tony D and Stax and Adriana, they leave. They go out the door. They're all ready for the Baruch Gangsters next week. Uh, so... They, they finally introduce Adriana as the woman who's been doing business for them with Chase U. So, she's now known as The Riz. <laughs> the Riz, really? What, now, what's she gonna be called now? The Riz Master? We, the Otaku will be mad about that, right? Sure. Anyway, so The Riz, Adriana, she's with there. She's there. So they're about to go in a car, they open up the trunk, and then another creepy bastard, Joe Gacy's there, and they're like, what the fuck are you doing in here? Where's the guy that was in the trunk? And I looked at, I think they were about to dump him over the bridge, you know, like two dimes. Apparently someone was supposed to be in there, and Gacy's like, oh yeah, I might have um, dumped him over the, over the bridge for you. So I'm like, wait, did he just admit to be to killing somebody? Well, not, yeah, I guess he was already dead. I don't know. Did he just admit to live murder. It was, we got two creepy bastards on the on fucking NXT: Gacy and fucking Tane and Paxley. Let them be a fucking tag team. Not a tag team, but like a faction with them. Put put Gacy in like Schism 2.0, and then you get like three other people. Well, where are you at? Another creepy tag team. And then you got, hey, you replace Ava Rain with Tatum Paxley. Then you have a creepy version of Schism. Another, well, two, Schism 2.0. I mean, it works. But then Ava, maybe Ava Rain might have something to say about that, though. She's still in the NXT. But I think he's better off being the uh, the co GM. She doesn't need to be back in uh, with Gacy. I don't think that was a good fit for her. I really don't. Basically, barely did anything. All she did was something with I think Ivy Nile, and that's it. It was just some horrible, not even that great matches. Had a couple of matches, and she was just green. I'm like, oh, this is bad. I don't think your dad taught you that taught you well there, Ava. You know what I mean, Simone Johnson. But she's doing a b better job as a co GM than she was as just like a like a side but not a side side piece for uh, for Gacy and the Grizzle Young veterans. That was a bad fit. That whole faction. I, I thought it was good to start, but then it started fizzling out. I was like, Gacy was going nowhere, Eva was just there, and the Grizzly Young Veterans, they got some title shots, but as always, they lose. So, like, pfft. They asked for a release, they didn't get it, then they finally do get the release after a few months later. I just broke them up, Gacy... It was just Gacy and Ava Rain, and that wasn't gonna work. So, they went their separate ways, and, you know, Gacy turns into, like, Raven. I don't know what he did, what, what the hell his gimmick is now. Ava's now the GM, was a co-GM of NXT, doing way better for herself. That's that. So, I don't know what they're doing with Gacy. But we'll see what happens with that. Alright, so all that, I gave two and a half out of five stars. Well, that's a lot of segments. That was just too much overkill. But you gotta put something in for filler. So we get all that. Alright, then we go to your... Main event of the evening, uh, number one contenders match for the NXT world title. Trick Williams taking on, oh, he did it, Grayson Waller. So, 
this was this was a pretty pretty decent match. Uh, uh, who got they they fight then they go a wall uh, Williams picks Trick up knocks him to the floor, then he throws him over the announcer's table then then hit Vic Joseph. Uh, they get back up, Waller hits a quick clothesline, and then Waller goes to the camera and is like, I just whooped you, trick! Hmm. <laughs> kind of funny, but still. That's what it is. Alright, they go back and forth after the break. Uh, Waller hits the rolling downward spiral for a near fall. Trick grabs a jumping neck breaker. Is about to whoop Grayson's ass some more. And then Cobello Hayes runs out. And he was not supposed to be there. And he gets on the apron. Starts like, Trick, come on! You know, starts trying to encourage him. I was like, oh, yeah, here's the heel turn. But it was a tease. And Trick is like, get out of here! Get out of here! And then and Grayson's kind of like laying in wait. Like, see what's going to happen. And then the crowd starts getting up. They're cheering. I'm like, who's coming out? So I got that NXT champion. Is it going to be on Andrade? Nope. It was my boy, Kevin Owens. He comes out and just like knocks Gr Grayson the fuck out. Those are back in the ring. And Trick and Mello still arguing. And then like they kind of stop the argument. And Trick hits a V-trigger. One, two, three. Trick Williams is still... The number one contender to Ilya Dragunov's NXT World Title, uh, match time thirteen oh six. It's a pretty good, pretty good match. I gave it two and a half out of five stars, and that was that. You know, Kevin's all happy, Trick's all happy. The crowd's going nuts. Booker T's having an orgasm in his pants, but the man that was not happy was Mellow, because he was like, "Ah, my plan didn't work." Damn. I would have got away with it if it wasn't for that fat guy. And those meddling fans. Stupid dog. Anyway. So yeah, so they're still planting the seeds for the eventual heel turn of Mello. Which I think he's, I think he's either going to get into the match at Vengeance Day. Because I think they're going to do the match at Vengeance Day. And then... Either he's going to get into the match, or they're going to keep continue to plant the seeds for the eventual turn, which will probably happen at Vengeance Day. And then, at Stunned and Deliver, we'll get Mellow versus Trick, maybe for the world title. But, I mean, we'll have to see what happens with, with all that. So that's it. That uh, ends NXT, New Year's Evil. And it was a pretty decent show, and I gave it 7.25 out of 5 stars. And that's it. That's all I got to say. So, that is it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to bed because I am dead tired. And I'm off tomorrow, so. I originally had the colonoscopy. That's why I took the day off anyway. So, I'm going to keep the day off and go back on. I actually had two days off. I had a Wednesday and Thursday off, but now I changed it. So, I put in for Thursday, so I am working Thursday, so I'm off tomorrow, and then I gotta work Friday, and a little, uh, I'm off, sa I was gonna work Saturday, but I gotta, I gotta, event, I gotta go to on Saturday, a little concert, but, it is what it is, so I got that, so I got a little short week, so I work today, um, I'm working Thursday and Friday, so, got that, so, I'm gonna, 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 um, hit the bed, I'm gonna sleep in most of the day tomorrow, then get up, do some do some errands and do some chores, and then on uh, the week on uh, Friday I gotta go to I gotta go to the freaking supermarket. Okay, I need some food. Uh, got that. So that's it. So I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out my last two videos in the description box. Continue to subscribe to this channel. We're still ten away from five hundred. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but if you like the video, hit that like button. Stick it straight up. Everybody's ass, and uh, leave a comment if you wish. You don't have you don't have to, but it's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, 
that's it. So I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Until next time, my friends, go to sleep. Well, if you're on the West Coast, well, go to sleep. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow for any, for for AEW or anything else that comes comes your way tomorrow. And that's it. See you tomorrow. Adios. And until next time. If you're not down with that, we'll fuck you, man. That's it. Peace, bitches. <laughs>